Hello everyone, welcome back to our Morton's On The Move channel. I'm Tom Morton, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you an update to our Tesla module installation that we did in our RV. So if you follow any of our videos about installing a Tesla module in our RV in the past, we made a few tweaks to the system that simplifies it a little bit. And I wrote a blog post about this over on my Tom's Tech Stuff section of our website that includes a schematic and talks a bit about the modifications. And in today's video, I wanna go through that schematic with you and showcase where we've changed things and how the system works. This is not gonna be as in-depth as in the past. I'm just gonna highlight some of the changes that we made to the system. And if you're considering doing something similar, this might help you out. So I've got the schematic up on my computer here. I'm gonna go ahead and start a screen recording and walk you through some of the changes that we made. All right, so initially you're gonna see the Tesla modules over here on the right hand side. I've actually showcased two Tesla modules in this schematic. We still only have one in our RV, but I wanted to showcase that they are relatively easy to just parallel together to increase your system's capacity. You can parallel the batteries like this for a, the nominal 21.6, we're gonna call it 24 volts out of the packs, or you could also wire them in a series if you were just to uh, wire your positive to your negative and then out like this, you're gonna see 20 or 48 volts between the two positions here and here. If you're building a much larger system with uh, considerably higher power draws than I'd say around 6,000 watts, a 48 volt system is something that you might want to consider doing. I'm gonna zoom back out here and briefly walk you through the rest of the schematic. Coming on the power positive lead, uh, nothing's really changed in the actual wiring. We still use two bus bars. I did add a main disconnect right off the batteries. I didn't have that before as we were just using this BP220 before as our primary disconnect and actually disconnecting it by disconnecting its enable circuit, but it doesn't completely take the system down. So it's really good to have a main disconnect in your system. Off the two main bus bars, we power our DC 24 to 12 volt converter to power our DC loads in our RV. And we also connect it to our multi plus 3000 24 volt unit that powers the 120 volts system in our RV. The MultiPlus both uses power into it and also pushes power out of it if it is charging. We also have charging coming in from our solar charge controller and our solar system here that flow into the bus bars and hence into the battery system. So what has changed in this system aside from the extra disconnect that we added? Well, it is the BMV 712 battery monitor that we installed in this system. The BMV 712 in the schematic is shown right here and it has this purple dashed wire that comes over and connects to the shunt which measures all of the current in and out of the battery. What is different about the BMV 712 over what I installed, which was the BMV 702, is that it has a temperature sensor probe that you can plug right in to the shunt itself. This temperature sensor probe allows you to monitor the temperature of the batteries directly on the BMV 712 screen and unit. The BMV 712 also has Bluetooth built in so you can monitor it right on your phone. What is great about this unit is that we can also control the relay output based upon the temperature of the batteries with this unit. So what we can do is we can use the relay output that's on the back of the BMV 712 to disconnect connect charging into the battery when it is too cold. Remember that lithium cells currently cannot be charged below freezing because it will damage them. So you need to have a means to disconnect the battery from charging if it gets too cold. And with this setup, you are using it for lots of purposes to actually monitor your battery power and now also to disconnect the battery if it gets too cold. Not only can you program that relay to disconnect if it gets too cold, you can also program that relay to disconnect if the voltage gets too high or too low or the temperature gets too hot or the state of charge gets too low. You can program that relay to do just about anything that you want from what it can sense. And that is great. And how we're using that is we're using it to disconnect the battery if it gets too cold. 
We have ours set around 40 degrees. You can set yours wherever you want. We have a battery heater on ours, and at 40 degrees, that means the battery heater is not working, so it gives us some leeway before the battery freezes. We've also set ours to disconnect it if it gets too hot. We have ours set around 105 degrees. You can set it where you want. We also have ours set to disconnect if the voltage gets too high. In the schematic, we have two charging sources. We have the solar charge controller here, and and the multi plus uh, inverter charger unit up here. These two charging sources, if you program it properly, should not overcharge the battery. It should stop charging at 24 volts, 24.5 volts, whatever you've got it set at. But if something goes wrong with this and it does start to overcharge the battery, you really need a backup to take the charging offline because that is a very dangerous situation. That's probably the most likely cause for this battery to explode without physical damage is overcharging it. If someone were to get in and mess with the settings on your Bluetooth for any of these and they did start to go haywire, you definitely want to make sure that you have a disconnect in place and that is what you can use the BMV 712 to do. You can set it at a high voltage disconnect and disconnect the charging from the system at high voltage. Keep in mind that the solar charge controllers and the BMV 712 have Bluetooth functionality and a lot of times they come without a password or it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Someone could get in there and mess with your settings. It would be a really diabolical, weird thing to do, but they could do it. So make sure to change your passwords on these devices if you are using them. Now, how actually are we disconnecting the charging from the circuits using this? Well, the inverter has a charge enable option. It has aux inputs that you can program using a computer. You have to get into, uh, we're using the MultiPlus here. Other inverters have similar options sometimes. I like using the MultiPlus because it works really well with the Tesla system. It has uh, voltages that work well with it. There are, as I said, there's other inverters out there that can do it, but the MultiPlus can also set up a two pin BMS in the setting. You go in and you actually use a assistant, a Victron assistant to connect to it. You're gonna have to use an MK3 to USB adapter, program the inverter, to look at that aux input one and use it as the charge enable. We could connect this enable circuit directly to the relay output on the BMV 712, but that only solves one of our charging needs. The other charging need is right here, the solar charge controller. We need a way to disconnect that. So we're using the Victron BP220 to disconnect charging on the solar side of things. The BP220 has an enable circuit that you can use to disconnect the system as well. And what we need to do is we cannot connect these two in series because of the way these systems actually look into the circuit. So we need a way to have two separate circuits. And how we do that is we are using a double pull, single throw relay to basically use the relay from the BMV 712 and turn it into two separate independent circuits that we can disconnect. That double hole single throw relay is right here. You can see that we have the red going through the coil, which is from our BMV 712, and then we have our independent circuits. You can use whatever double pull single throw relay or really any multiplexing relay that you want. I do have a link to all of the products that I used to build this system in the blog post and there is a link to a suggested relay there. I would probably recommend having a spare one of these on hand though because if for some reason it fails, it should fail open so that the system will quit functioning. And if it does fail, your system's gonna be down. So it might not be a bad idea to have a backup one of these on hand. So overall, those are the changes that I've made to the system. I'm not gonna go through the rest of the system in detail as I've already done that. This system, using the BMV 712 to control these parts and pieces simplifies things a little bit. Previously, I had used independent controllers to monitor the voltage and the temperature. And while that does work, and you could definitely do that, this gets rid of a couple parts and pieces and combines it all into one relatively simple, in the grand scheme of things, way to make sure you have redundancy in your 
over voltage protection and provide under temperature protection. One additional thing in the schematic here is this potential additional DC charger that I have connecting to the BP220. I upsized the BP220 coming off of the Victron. Originally, we used a smaller, only I think it's a 65 amp version. I upsized this to allow for potential additional DC charging. I get the question asked a lot, can you charge from the alternator? You can, but you need to have a charge controller to properly provide the correct voltage to the Tesla batteries. There are DC to DC converters that would work for this. You could even use a 12 volt alternator to charge the battery. Victron makes one, Sterling Power makes one. They're not really powerful and there's definitely gonna be losses there, but it's doable if you really, really wanna have alternator charging for your Tesla batteries. Lastly, with the system, like before, this is not a full BMS solution, battery management solution. It is not monitoring the cells in the packs continuously, and you need to have some means at least to check the cell balance in your packs and balance them. And I'm doing that on the schematic with this little Tenergy 5-in-1 battery check and balance unit. Now I get a lot of questions about this as well. How do you actually connect one of these to the Tesla packs? I bought my packs from 057 Technology. Jason Hughes over there can actually remove the existing BMS board that Tesla has that is very challenging to make use of. Although you can check out EVTV, Jack Richard over there has a system that can utilize the existing Tesla BMS modules, but I believe it's a 48 volt system only. Don't quote me on that. But what 057 does is they remove that board, they put a board in that you can easily plug in uh, JSTXH connectors and do really any, they're remote control battery checking units that you can use to check these ballot batteries and you can even balance them with those. It takes a couple days to get a good balance on it, but it can do it. I get a lot of people asking, what if I have the original Tesla modules? How do I connect the JSTXH connectors? You just have to make your own harness. It is not impossible to do. What you're gonna have to do is break out the wiring leads and actually connect them into a JSTXH harness. I talk a little bit about that and point you to some information in the blog post if you wanna learn more about how you can do that. It's not that complicated, but it is an extra step and you're gonna to have to be very careful that you don't short out any of those little wires because there's no protection on them. It will melt the wires in a heartbeat. If you want a full BMS battery management solution for the Tesla packs, they do exist. Batrium, an Australian company is working on a solution right now, the Watchmon 5, which should be a really great solution for the Tesla packs. It's gonna be different than this schematic here though. You're gonna to have to use a full disconnect or two disconnects to have it control it. I'm not gonna go into how you could use that, but that is an option. Other solutions would be a REC or Orion. Uh, they are BMS that I've seen used on Tesla packs. However, they are a bit more complicated and really kind of more designed for electric vehicle use. Over at 057 Tech, they're working on a mini BMS that will hopefully be out soon and is going to provide the balancing and cell checking for the Tesla packs with a relay output as well so you could connect it to our disconnect modules it's not gonna be a full BMS solution, but it might be a really great option or alternative to the Tenergy 5-in-1 unit that I've been using. The Tenergy 5-in-1 is not something you wanna leave plugged in all the time either. If you are considering this, don't leave the Tenergy 5-in-1 plugged in all the time because it will actually unbalance the pack. It uses power only from the first four cells of the pack and the last two are gonna get out of balance. What I do is anytime I'm in the basement of my RV, I just go ahead and I plug this little guy in and I check the balance of the pack. It's usually good. I actually haven't balanced the pack in about a year now. It just hasn't needed it. It stayed almost perfectly balanced. I think I balanced it once just for fun, but it didn't need it. I check the balance, I check the cells. You can also check the internal resistance of the cells to make sure everything is properly functioning and safe. One last thing on the schematic here is over here on the MultiPlus. In this, I did not showcase 
how the shore or generator connects or the inverter output connects to the RV. I intentionally didn't do this because there's so many different ways to do it. If you're curious as to how we did it, that hasn't changed. If you go back, I think Solar Phase 3 blog posts and videos showcase how we connected ours using a manual transfer switch and jumpering the legs so that it lights up both sides of our panel and lights up our entire 50 amp coach. That has worked great for us, no complaints. However, there is a new option available from AM Solar called their Smart ATS. This is for RVs that have 50 amp service, which is two legs coming in or split phase service. The problem with 50 amp RVs connecting to these hybrid inverters is that you can't really use the hybrid functionality unless you put a manual transfer switch in and jumper the two legs. The smart ATS senses whether you have split phase coming in or just single phase and will jumper the legs automatically while passing all the power through your inverter. This enables you to automatically use the hybrid functionality of your inverter if you plug into anything less than a 50 amp service. I think this is a really cool product. However, I see one flaw, and that is if you have a built-in generator in your RV. The Cummins Onan generators, unless you're up to the 12,000 watt units, usually provide two single phase outputs that are not in separate phase from each other. They light up both legs, but they are actually single phase. And that ATS, that smart ATS is only gonna see single phase and it's basically gonna cut your generator in half. It's only gonna take one leg and power it through your multi-plus and the batteries are gonna have to make up the rest of the power. Not a great option if you're trying to run two air conditioners off the generator. I've talked with AM Solar about this and they may have a solution on the horizon, but keep that in mind if you're trying to implement that solution with a built-in generator. So that's about it in the changes to our system. If you are considering doing this, Please note that while the Tesla packs are very high quality and can be very safe if they're operated within their proper operating specs, if they get out of operating specs, they can definitely catch fire and explode. Be sure that you are confident in what you're doing or you have professional assistance if you're trying to construct a system like this and it should be safe. Don't take my schematics for this is how to do it. Every system is unique. Every system you need to consider for what you're trying to accomplish. This is just an idea of one way that you can do it without a full BMS solution. Thank you so much for joining us here on our Morton's on the Move channel. On this channel, we share mainly travel and travel tech tips like this one, but I also have a second channel, my Tom Morton channel. I haven't done a lot with it yet, but I'm planning to share more technical videos over there. So definitely check that channel out as well. I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye.